Hi students, happy morning, hello. Can you see me, hear me? Hi everyone, happy morning. How are you? Can you see me or me? Let me see your chats. Good morning. How are you everyone? Good morning Priyanka Madhu. Hi everyone. So welcome to Anacademy Neat English. I'm your biology educator Ambika Sharma. And today we are obviously going to continue the genetics again. Okay. Oh, thanks, Trisha. But let's, chalo, let's discuss that too. But first of all, right, I want to thank you all, guys. Right? Thank you so much for taking your time to, for writing such beautiful things. And thank you so much for solving the questions as well. Right? I can see many students, many students, they used to write the homework here. That's a very good thing, Bache. It's a very good habit. Okay, and it is a request, kindly note down such questions in your notes as well, so that whenever near to the NEET examination, you will get time, you will revise them. Okay. Okay. So, see, it's Sunday, I know, Hannah, it's Sunday and I'm taking your class today because uh, yesterday I was not able to take it because of some reasons. So, I thought that I should compensate it today. So, we are about to finish this chapter. In this particular chapter, I'm going slow, knowingly. Okay. Because I think that in genetics, there are many things that are not clear to the students. They think that they understand the chapter, but when it comes to the NCRT reading, right, that language they are not uh, you know, they, are, they are not able to understand that properly, right? They don't comprehend it nicely, right? So that is why I thought that in all the lectures, let's include the NCRT snips as well and let's discuss the concepts. So after finishing this particular chapter, that's what I'm thinking for all of you. You let me know you are okay with it or not, right? After finishing this chapter, let's keep a one shot of this as well. What's it? Yes. Raju, Moin, Suhashini, Trisha, what's it? Let's let's keep the one shot of this lecture as well. Because see, now we have the time. We have the time to complete our syllabus. We have the time to give more time to the difficult topics. Right? Right? So later on, you know, it will be difficult for us. Why? Because uh, then so many things will be there. Physics, chemistry, biology, this and that. So now I'm thinking that I will keep one shot of this particular lecture. Okay? Okay? So I hope you guys are okay. Fine. Great. So, will I get your support? And yes, yesterday one student was asking, ma'am, when are you going to start the genetics? Please subscribe to our channel. Please subscribe to this amazing channel. Right? Hit the bell icon. Uh, subscribe to this amazing channel so that you will get the notification of the classes. Okay? So that you will get the notification of the classes. So, do it. Please do it. Fine. And see here, Vache, here we have the links for the Avengers 2.0 batch where I'm going to complete your biology. So please go for it, right? Join this batch ASAP, right? And if you will join it in the month of December, January, it will be too late then. So please do it quickly. Currently, we are studying human physiology in that particular batch. So please do it quickly, okay? So now let's start the genetics and let's start with a quick, quick revision, fine? Okay, so what we have covered so far, just a minute. Yeah. So, what we have covered so far. So, now you know who, who has given the term genetics. Can you tell me the name of that scientist? Who gave the term genetics? Yes. Let's start with the quick revision and then uh, we'll talk about the inheritance of the, right? We are, we are going to talk about the gene interaction and we are going to talk about the deviations from the Mendelian inheritance. Very good, very good, excellent, Bachi. Very good. So, you know that when it comes to the term genetics, the term genetics was given by, yes, your Wetterson, right? Is uh, uh, William Wetterson, okay? So, it was given by your William Wetterson. Done, Bachi. Who's the father of genetics? We know that the father of genetics is T.H. Uh, 
is it T.H. Morgan or is it Grieger John Mendel, father of genetics? Father of genetics. Yes. Father of genetics is Grieger John Mendel. And when it comes to the father of experimental genetics, then you know that's T.H. Morgan. And today, even we are going to discuss about the T.H. Morgan as well. Clear, Bache? Clear, Bache? That's what we are going to discuss. And yes, you have one more biology teacher on this particular channel. That's your Gopika ma'am. She'll be taking the classes. We'll share the schedule with you all, right? So you can take the benefit from both the classes and you can complete your syllabus nicely, right? Okay. Done. So, term genetics, William Wettison, that's what we have covered. And then, Bache, we talked about the Mendel, we talked about the Mendelian inheritance, where we have discussed three laws. So, you know the law of dominance as well. Clear? Let's have a quick revision of it. Right. We know the law of segregation as well. Fine. Law of segregation as well. And then, we have the law of independent assortment. That's a request. Please go for the details of, please go for the question practice of these topics right please go for the topic wise question practice fine and when it comes to the pedigree analysis i'll keep a separate class where we will discuss it in detail and we are going to solve the questions as well so don't worry about that so these are the laws that we have covered now for your quick revision law of dominance states that that when in a gene gene contains the pair of alleles isn't it so when in a gene or simply i can say that gene is a pair of alleles your gene is a pair of unit factors and these unit factors are the discrete units you know it very well right they are not going to show blending right you can obtain them as such in the f2 generation that's what we have covered so far isn't it that's what we have covered so far we started our discussion with certain postulates and on the basis of that we explain these laws right we have explained these laws isn't it so when it comes to the law of dominance it says that when in a gene we have different factors gene is a pair of unit factors or it's a pair of alleles and when you have two different alleles so the one which is dominant okay it is going to express itself that is what law of dominance is and now you know this law is also not universally acceptable i'll tell you why then comes the law of segregation now this law states that that no doubt we know that gene is a pair of allele but at the time of gamete formation as per this law, at the time of gamete formation, from this pair of alleles, these alleles will get separated and each gamete will get only one allele for a particular character. Right, Trisha, Nandini, Rithigna, Suhashini, Royal, that's what we know, isn't it? So, gene is a pair of allele and at the time of gamete formation, these alleles will get separated and randomly they will get separated independently they will get separated isn't it and each gamete each gamete is going to receive only one allele of a particular character of a particular trait so the gametes they are pure for a trait isn't it for a character for a trait so this is your law of purity of gamete and we have solved a question on the basis of that like if it is a gamete it will either contain capital a or the small a but it is not possible that it will contain both if it is a gamete so that's what you need to remember mcq the nta can frame mcq on the basis of that clear next is your law of independent assortment and here we talked about the di hybrid cross do you remember right do you remember that wonderful class where we have discussed the product rule right where we have discussed certain formulas to calculate number of zygote to calculate number of gametes remember do you remember that sure so law of independent assortment also uh, so law of independent assortment if you want to understand this particular law you need to understand the inheritance of two genes that is your dihybrid cross isn't it so here what we discuss basically here we say that when you talk about two different genes two different genes means this will be the situation right Gene is a pair of allele and I am talking about the inheritance of two genes. So, that is going to be the case. That is going to be the scenario, isn't it? Isn't it? Of course. Of course, it will be like this. So, now my point is that the segregation, okay, segregation means separation. Separation of this, separation of this R is not going to affect the separation of the Y. Fine. 
right that gamete formation that gamete formation that segregation of r is not going to affect the segregation of y okay it is going to be independent independently r will segregate will separate from y during the gamete formation and in the next generation randomly right they are going to fuse with each other at the time right at the time when there will be the zygote formation randomly they will fuse with each other so that is the meaning of that independent assortment and we have discussed the cross right we have formed the cross we know the ratio we know the product rule as well so any doubt yes students any doubt this is what we have covered so you know in our classes right we we just don't finish a topic in the next class we always revise that particular topic okay and i am expecting same from you if you are attending my classes if you know that today ma'am is going to continue the genetics right so you should write everything in your notes and then you should revise it as well fine you should revise it as well isn't it isn't it so it is given in ncrt this inheritance of two genes and you know the ratio as well right you know the ratio as well so now quickly tell me about the product rule so by applying the product rule just let me know just let me know the genotypic ratio here apply product rule there is no need to cram right there is no need to cram we understand the concept we understand the rules here so quickly tell me the genotypic ratio and no need no need to cram it just solve it and let me know what will be the genotypic ratio here this 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1 is the phenotypic ratio i am asking about the genotypic ratio everyone quickly shiva trisha priyanka sahithi quick Shankara, don't worry, bache. We'll start that chapter two. No worry about that. But yes, now this is what I'm planning that I should go for the one shot of principles of uh, inheritance and variation, and then I will go for next chapter that is your body fluid and circulation. Okay, okay. So we have completed so many chapters. We are about to finish our syllabus, guys. We are about to finish our syllabus. So I don't know about you. I am very excited for starting the complete one shots. Yes. So if you guys are not aware, let me tell you this genotypic ratio, the product rule once again. So you know that this is what you have to do. You have to multiply it two times. Why? Because it is the dihybrid cross. And when you do it, so see, that's how you're going to multiply it. And that's how you will get the answer of your question. So it will be... that's the ratio please check it that's the ratio everyone please check it so that's what we know so this is your law of independent assortment that we have covered in the last class so here you guys can see this right even we have completed the test cross as well right so see what they have written here that can you can you using the punnett square data work out the genotypic ratio at the f2 stage and you know this you have solved it so whatever is given in ncrt question can be framed from this part so this is given in ncrt but in an indirect manner so that's how we have to decode it fine that's how we have to decode it so the next topic here is incomplete dominance yes but let me tell you one thing here uh they say uh, in the ncrt you know that you know that uh, in that chapter like let's say if it is 5.1 5.2 5.3 that's how if it is divided i have shuffled it a bit okay okay just a law of independent assortment is given after this co-dominance and everything but here i'm showing it before that right why because in in a same flow then only you will understand the topics right so in ncrt they are you know little jumbled but uh, uh, in whatever flow i am going to teach here in class accordingly have arranged that snips so don't get confused about it fine don't get confused about it so the next topic is the inheritance which inheritance gene sorry next topic is the uh, interaction so which interaction are we going to study we are going to talk about the gene interaction and which is this gene interaction is basically the deviation from the mendel's work like whatever mendel has said here you will see examples where we are not going to follow the mendel's rule but now the question is that if we are not following the Mendel's rule, then why do we consider such laws as the, you know, important laws or these are the laws which explains the inheritance? Now, this is the question, right? This is the question, right? Yes or no? Yes or no? 
just a minute ma'am if they give cross similar to die hybrid cross and ask for the genotypic see but if you shiva if you have to apply the uh, product rule so you know what is the condition like you are getting the ratio 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1 as phenotypic ratio why when two two heterozygous individual they cross isn't it isn't it so if that is the scenario they are giving you a cross randomly but two parents are heterozygous for the trait right then you can apply this rule and then you can get the same ratio so these are also the things that you need to uh, take care just say let's say if they are asking you for the ratio and one parent is having this genotype another parent is having this genotype so of course it will vary it is not going to be the same isn't it isn't it or if it is this if this one is the ratio i hope now if can you tell me what will be the ratio now if this is the case if this is the case this is your parent one this is your parent two and now they are asking for the ratio what will you say thank you so much bache what will you say i think now some students those who are regular they can answer no bache nandini it is going to be one is to one is to one is to one right so you have to it is not mandatory that if you will see dihybrid cross all the time you are going to write that ratio is 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1 no no you have to see the parents as well so if if see if parent is this like this is also heterozygous dominant this is also heterozygous dominant so here in that case you will see right then the ratio is going to be this but if that is the scenario shiva i am answering your question here first and then i will start gene interaction so if this is the scenario here you have heterozygous dominant parent and here what will you see you will see homozygous right recessive parent and it is clearly the example of test cross in the dihybrid cross right it is clearly an example of what it is an example of it is an example of test cross so you know that in the case of test cross one parent is going to be homozygous recessive and if the another one is heterozygous dominant so 50% population will show the dominant trait 50% will show the recessive trait but here you know it's dihybrid so the ratio will be like this okay okay so i hope you got the answer of your question right so any other doubt guys then i will start this topic gene interaction any other doubt sure it's going to be same mr royal vinutha it is going to be same bachcha it is also a, it is also your uh, test cross right any other doubt guys start solving questions and start asking questions here in the chat section i promise i'm going to answer it to you fine i'm going to answer it to you so the next question here is the gene interaction so when you are talking about the gene interaction as i said it is the post mendelian inheritance where we are not following the mendel's law but mendel's law no doubt we have the examples where mendel's law uh, laws will not be followed but still mendel has ex ex uh, explained the general trend for that inheritance that this is how it is taking place okay so now when you talk about this topic you are going to talk about allelic interaction this is a very important please focus allelic interaction and here you will also discuss about the non allelic interaction fine now when it is the allelic interaction two alleles are interacting so can i not say that it is intra genic interaction can i not say that it is intra genic interaction okay let me explain this see you are saying allelic interaction you have a gene gene is having a pair of allele so here in this pair of allele how that alleles are interacting with each other that is what we are going to discuss under allelic interaction clear that is what we are going to discuss under allelic interaction right right so can i say that if it is the allelic interaction because you are talking about two alleles means you are talking about a genes you are talking about a genes okay so it is intra genic interaction isn't it don't you think so then it is intra genic interaction intra means within within a gene how that alleles are interacting this is how you can remember it right right choco girl bachche true breeding homozygous homozygous for a trait homozygous dominant it can be homozygous recessive got it so allelic interaction is also known as intragenic interaction 
वॉट इज इट इट इज ऑल्सो नोन एज इंट्राजेनिक इंटरक्शन नाउ नॉन एलिल राइट दे आर नॉट द एलील्स ऑफ द सेम जीन दे आर नॉट द अलील्स फॉर अ सेम कैरेक्टर फाइन हियर यू आर डिस्कसिंग टू डिफरेंट जीन्स सो नॉन एलिलिक इंटरेक्शन इज ऑल्सो नोन एज इंटरजेनिक इंटरेक्शन इट इज नोन एज वॉट इट इज नोन एज इंटरजेनिक इंटरेक्शन आर यू गेटिंग इट इट इज इंटरजेनिक इंटरेक्शन आई एम एक्सप्लेनिंग दिस अगेन अलीलिक इंट्रा intra you know what is the meaning of intra intra means within so there is a gene gene is having a pair of alleles how are they interacting here you are talking about non allelic interaction so you have two different genes or you can write it like this so how are they interacting that will come under this part fine that is going to come under this part so in allelic interaction what are you going to study you will you will talk about incomplete dominance you will talk about codominance you are going to talk about multiple alleles here you are going to talk about the pleiotropy fine and even the lethal genes are also right even we are going to talk about the lethal genes also so these are the main topics that you have to study under this क्लियर बच्चे दीज आर द मेन टॉपिक्स दैट वी नीड टू स्टडी अंडर इट ओके जस्ट अ मिनट ओके सो प्लियोट्रॉपी विल बी देर ओके एंड नेक्स्ट एंड वेन यू आर टॉकिंग अबाउट दिस इंटरजेनिक इंटरक्शन हियर वील बी डिस्कसिंग अबाउट द कॉम्प्लीमेंट्री जीन्स ऑल दो सप्लीमेंट्री जीन्स आर ऑल्सो देर बट इट इज समेयर रिलेटेड टू uh one another topic as well so here we will just focus on two things complementary genes and epistasis okay epistasis clear clear and the other topic that we need to discuss is not the part of this but yes again a very important topic and that is your polygenic inheritance okay what is it it is your polygenic inheritance is that clear yes which is that clear so that's what we are going to cover today fine fine so incomplete codominance multiple alleles pleiotropy very 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 important polygenic inheritance also known as quantitative inheritance and then intergenic interactions complementary genes epistasis is the most important topic so any doubt here any doubt here yes tell me quickly do you have any doubt here or is it done yes ma'am it's clear explain the next part Sure. Sure. Are you sure? Fine. And here, as I said, these are the two main topics that I'm going to cover. But here, in intergenic interactions, बच्चे, you know what else do we have? Additive in uh, interaction is also there. Supplementary genes are also there. collaborative genes are also there like here you have so 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 many examples right here you have so many examples in intergenic interaction right so additive genes will be there supplementary genes will be there even the duplicate genes will be there clear inhibitory genes will also be there but mainly what are we going to cover this is what we are going to cover fine this is what we are going to cover right bachche right bachche yeah i will keep a question practice session as well don't worry about that so now let's start with incomplete dominance again a very simple topic see the name is explaining everything here the word is incomplete dominance right incomplete dominance so it is what is the meaning of this word that dominance is not complete right something is not completely dominant just a minute ishita malwadkar first of all this question is not going to be asked in the neat examination that whether i'm married or not but just for your cl uh, clarity i am unmarried happily unmarried okay so please do not spam here if you are here to understand the genetics please stay there otherwise tata bye bye ha na otherwise start up by by no need to come to our class we don't like spammers hello guys 
tell her we don't uh, we don't need spammers so the question here is incomplete dominance that your dominance is not complete if you talk about the mendel right if i talk about the mendel here what mendel used to say that if red is the dominant trait hai na that's what mendel used to say and white is the recessive trait so in the f1 generation in that first filial generation all the all the individuals all the offsprings are going to be red means they will show dominant trait isn't it they will show dominant trait isn't it isn't it yes or no that's what mendel used to say that if the dominant trait is the red color if the recessive trait is the white color and then in the first filial generation right all the individuals will show the dominant trait that is the red color that's what we know that's what we understand but here the story is little different here this is not the case right for the first time they notice such thing in the case of your mira bilis jelepa but here from such topics ratios are important from neat perspective and the examples are important right in the neat they are not going to ask you to define incomplete uh, dominance they will simply ask you the examples or the ratio so that's what you need to focus okay so mirabilis jelepa do you, oh mirabilis jelepa do you know about the mirabilis jelepa that is your 4 o'clock plant that's your 4 o'clock plant okay so first time it was observed here that 4 o'clock plant is having red flowers okay 4 o'clock plant is having white flowers and it is having pink flowers okay that it is having pink flowers so it's a very common plant i hope you have seen it right if you come to this north region it's quite common right it's it's quite common i told you no mirabilis jelepa it is the 4 o'clock plant that is the name here and even it is a uh, uh, गुलेबंद हाँ मे बी वी इवन कॉल इट एज गुलेबंद ओके सो मेरा विलेज जेल पा फोर ओ क्लॉक प्लांट ऑल्सो नोन एज गुलेबंद सो दिस इज द प्लांट सो दी सो दिस इज वॉट दे ऑब्जर्व सो नाउ वॉट्स द पॉइंट हियर हियर द पॉइंट इज की इफ लेट से देर इज अ रेड फ्लॉर एंड लेट से इफ देर इज अ व्हाइट फ्लॉर सो दिस इज वॉट वी एक्सपेक्ट ना दिस इज वॉट वी एक्सपेक्ट ना दैट इन एफ वन जेनरेशन हियर इट शुड शो in first filial generation it should show red but it was actually pink right it was actually pink so heterozygous heterozygous dominant was pink here so now when you take the ratio of f2 generation right now let's talk about the ratios and you know that we check the ratios of f2 generation fine so see just write down the gametes here rr and this is rr this is the punnett square no right this heterozygous will form the gametes these are the gametes so now that is going to be the scenario yes or no that is going to be the scenario yes or no tell me so capital r capital r it is it will be red it is the homozygous condition so red flower will be there when there is the heterozygous condition right the color is going to be pink and when it is homozygous recessive the color is going to be white that's the case got it that's the case so when you talk about the ratios here just look at the phenotypic ratio first fine just look at the phenotypic ratio first so phenotype one red flower two pink one white one red flower two pink one white so the phenotypic ratio will be 1 is to 2 is to 1 that one flower is red one flower is white but two flowers are pink sometimes you miss it right two are pink here one is red one is white that is going to be the phenotypic ratio but here bachche genotypic ratio is also same right here you will see that genotypic ratio is also same genotype homozygous recessive one heterozygous dom oh, sorry homozygous dominant one heterozygous dominant two homozygous recessive one so here the phenotypic and the genotypic ratio both are same got it here the phenotypic ratio and the genotypic ratio both are same this is what your incomplete dominance is right this is what your incomplete dominance is got it right so it was you know studied by karl korins do you remember karl korins right he is the one who rediscovered the mendel's work 
I told you that Mendel got recognition posthumously, means after his death. So three scientists, they rediscovered Mendel's work, your Hugo de Vries, your Karl Korins and your Eric von Schemach. Okay, Eric von Schemach, Karl Korins and Hugo de Vries. Clear, bache? So that is what you need to see here. Mirabel is Jalepa, 4 o'clock plan, Carol Korn, right? So that's the point. Mummy ka phone. Hai na? So that's what you need to notice here. So this is the example, this is the ratio that you need to keep in your mind. Fine? Any doubt? Any doubt? Okay, so why such incomplete dominance is there? Why such incomplete dominance is there? Maybe there is some mutation. Maybe because of that mutation, the uh, enzyme is uh, not functional. Okay, or enzyme is less functional. It is not properly functional. Any reason can be there. Okay, any reason can be there. So this is the this is the example and this is the cross. And other than that, this is not the only example. If I talk about the second example, it is of Snapdragon. Do you know Snapdragon? Also call it you also call it as dog flower. It's antirenum. Examples are important, student. Antirenum. This is the botanical name, right? This this is the example. Find find examples are important. Antirenum. So it is snapdragon also known as dog flower. It also used to show the incomplete dominance like your miraculous chalipa. Okay, and even size of starch grain. This is important, huh? Size of starch grain in pea plant. But it's a previous year question. Do you know that? It is a previous year question. It's a P Y Q. It's a previous year question. It's a P Y Q. Size of starch grain in pea plant. Fine. These are the examples. Examples are important. Now, let's quickly revise it from NCRT. Right? So, see, same thing is given. Then, when experiments on P were repeated, right, Bache, it was found that someone, sometimes, F1 had a phenotype that did not resemble either of the two parents. Okay? So, inheritance of flower color in dog flower, that is your snapdragon or antirenum species, it's a good example to understand incomplete dominance. So, here, True breeding, red flower. What is the meaning of true breeding? True breeding means pure line. What is the meaning of pure line? Means homozygous for a trait. Right. Here particularly it is homozygous dominant. Okay. Pure line means homozygous for a trait. Right. Right. Uh, it's VK. I will explain that part too. Wait for it. Wait for some time. Okay, so when the F1 was self-pollinated, F2 resulted in this ratio 1 is to 2 is to 1. So here the genotypic ratio is exactly same like the Mendelian monohybrid cross, but the phenotypic ratio is changed. Isn't it? Phenotypic ratio is changed. So what happened was that R was not completely dominant. Isn't it? If there is pink color, means your red color is not completely dominant. Isn't it? Your red color is not completely dominant. Fine. So that's why red and white mixes the pink. So see here they have explained this part as well. This is the explanation of this concept of dominance. So what they have explained uh, like, uh, okay. So every gene as you know, every gene as you know contains the information to express a particular trait. You know it, isn't it? You know it guys. Every gene contains the information to express a particular trait. So, in a diploid organism, right, in a diploid organism, there are two copies of each gene. Is it understood? We are having 46 chromosomes. We know that 23 from mother, 23 from father. So, whatever genes we have, we have the copies of that. We have it in the form of a pair. That is written here, now. That is written here, Poonam. Okay, so now these two alleles need not always be identical, right? It's not mandatory that they need to be same. They can be in heterozygous condition as well. So one of them may be different due to some changes that it has undergone, right? Maybe, you know, mutations. Okay, so that is why information is mu uh, modified there. Mutations are there. So th that is the example they have given. So see now what they are saying that let's take an example of a gene that contains the information for producing an enzyme, right? Let's say capital T is producing a particular enzyme A. Let's say that, okay? Okay, so now you have two copies of it. Fine, you have two copies of it. So they are saying, let us assume that normal allele produces normal enzyme. A is your normal enzyme which is needed for red color, just assume it, right, just assume it, 
क्लियर बच्चे क्लियर बच्चे सो ए इज एन एंजाइम which will act on your substrate s and it will complete it will change that substrate s into that red color let's assume it and actually that's how it works fine actually that's how it works you know na central dogma of information dna is going to form mrna mrna is going to form protein so dna to mrna transcription mrna to protein it is translation and this protein is what it is an enzyme so this enzyme will act on a particular substrate this enzyme it will act on a particular substrate it will change that substrate it will give it a give it a product right so here in this case if you are talking about the red color just imagine right just imagine if you are talking about a red color here right right so how that red color is produced this capital r let's take the example of capital r okay so this capital r has formed the enzyme a which will act on a substrate s and then that substrate s will give you the red color got it that substrate s will give you the red color but now here because that process is not complete right you are getting the pink color why such modification can be there maybe the normal or less efficient enzyme is formed maybe this enzyme is normal but its activity is not that good it is less efficient right its efficiency is not that good it cannot convert that substrate into the red color effectively okay and if it is non functional or that it is not at all functional it cannot act on that substrate or maybe there is no production of enzyme any reason can be there for such incomplete dominance is that clear yes is that clear tell me is that clear guys please revert is that clear fine doubt bachche so ncert is clear na ncert is clear na okay so this is your this is the example fine so that's what they have explained here that this modified allele in the first case the modified allele is equivalent to the unmodified allele right it will produce the same phenotype that results in the transformation of substrate s okay okay such equivalent allele pairs are very common but if the allele produces a non functional enzyme phenotype may be affected so that's the points that they have given na they are explaining that okay okay right so might be it is not converting the substrate might be it is converting the substrate but not that effectively might be that enzyme is non functional or no enzyme is produced at all clear bachche clear bachche so the phenotype will only be dependent on the functioning of the unmodified allele the allele which is not modified the allele which is producing that particular trait that it it needs to produce then only you know the phenotype is dependent on that thing so these alleles are going to control that phenotype is that clear bachche is that clear they will give you that result fine so unmodified means that functioning allele will represents the original phenotype right that is the dominant allele and modified will give you some another character right it is generally the recessive allele okay it is generally the recessive allele so that simply that is what they are explaining here so if there is any doubt do let me know so whenever any character they are explaining dominance and recessive nature dominant and recessive nature this is what they are explaining okay this is what they are explaining dominant and recessive nature that's what they are explaining okay fine 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 so that 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 is what you need to take care here so what am i saying that when will you see the dominant trait when the trait uh, when the allele is forming unmod when allele is unmodified it is forming that enzyme the which is functioning properly and when will you see the recessive trait here you guys can see right it is due to non functional enzyme or because no enzyme is formed 
when you will see when will you see the white color when there is no enzyme when will you see the red color when enzyme is formed and it is converting substrate into product got it so that that is the explanation for the dominance and recessiveness as well and that is why when it is incomplete dominance your dominant allele is not functional the enzyme is not functional at all so one student was asking about the starch grain question no that ma'am explain the size of starch grain Hai na? size of starch grain it's very simple now tell me let's say dominant is 10 centimeter right the recessive one is 5 centimeter so if it is the incomplete dominance what will you see something intermediate something intermediate you are going to see if dominant is 10 recessive is 5 might be intermediate is 7 it can be like this so try to answer this question guys now try to answer this question i have added one or two questions for you Tell me what should be the answer, Bache? What should be the answer? Are you sure that it should be fourth? Are you sure about it? You have to explain me the reason as well. Explain the reason to me. See, in a cross between a large starch grain size, producing pea plant with a small starch grain size, okay, producing pea plants, what proportion of progeny shows large sized starch grain out of 2000 seeds obtained in F2 generation. So here you know that this question is simply related to the ratio large and the small size and in the F2 generation you have to right you have to answer that which one will show the large sized starch grain okay. So size of starch grain I told you it is an example of size of starch grain in pea plant is an example of your incomplete dominance that's what I just said right incomplete dominance so now you know that you have a uh, 2000 p plant so out of that 2000 like if, even if you will go for that one is to two is to one ratio you will get the answer of your question 500 will be uh, you know the large one 500 will be the smaller one and then the remaining thousand will be what they will show you the they will show you the intermediate size so that's how you guys can answer it right Right, so TK, one more question is there. When a tall plant with long size starch grain is crossed with a dwarf plant with short starch grain, the F1 generation is having all tall plant with intermediate sized starch grain. What would be the phenotypic ratio of tall plants and the plants with long sized starch grain in F2 generation? Can you just give it a try? So that's your homework. You will answer it. That's your homework. You will answer it to me right in the comment section after the class. Fine. You need to answer it to me in the comment section after the class. Done. So that's what incomplete dominance is. And the next is going to be your co-dominance. That is also interesting. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. That's co-dominance. Right, co-dominance, incomplete dominance means dominant character was not expressing itself completely. Now it is the co-dominance, co means together, right, co means together. So here what is happening, two alleles, they are expressing themselves simultaneously. Two alleles of a gene are expressing themselves themselves simultaneously right simultaneously they are expressing themselves are you getting it 
right that is codominance in the codominance also that is what you need to note down the genotypic and the phenotypic ratio is same just like your incomplete dominance okay here also your genotypic and phenotypic ratio is same just like your incomplete dominance that is 1 is to 2 is to 1 1 is to 2 is to 1 fine that's what you are going to get in the codominance as well now see this is the example of codominance see one parent is having one parent is having red color right homozygous dominant another parent is white color right and f1 generation is wrong it is having red and white both it is having red and white both one more example red flower white flower and here in f1 you will see red colored petals also you are going to see white colored petals also so that is the example of the codominance clear bache that is the example of the codominance so when you talk about the codominance so here we have different different example they say we have the example in the cattle color also cattle color cattle coat color okay your uh, blood groups your blood group and you know which blood group ab blood group right universal recipient and uh, then you have the example of sickle cell anemia as well i'll explain them right then you have the example of sickle cell anemia hba hbs their existence fine so that these are the examples that you need to focus so you have the example of ab blood group but it is incorrect madhu abo blood group it should not be there it is ab blood group right the the cattle uh, the cot color of the cattle right and the sickle cell anemia these are the examples of your codominance what are they these are the examples of your codominance now let me explain this part see whenever you talk about the blood group i will explain blood group in detail fine you need it for the multiple analysis as well so i will explain blood group in detail clear clear so when you are talking about the blood group you know that karl landsteiner he is the one who gave the blood group he is the one who gave abo blood grouping system okay he is the one who has given abo blood group system yeah abo blood grouping system isn't it isn't it and moreover your d castello and sterling right the students of karl and steiner they they explained about the ab blood group do you know about it sahiti right when you talk about the blood grouping right so karl and steiner he gave us the abo blood group he explained about the blood group a blood group b blood group o but he was not aware that ab blood group is also there okay so the students of karl and steiner see amazing students isn't it Anna, and what my students are doing they are just asking me ma'am are you married are you married are you married they are not even concerned so the students of karl and steiner d castello and sterly they explained about the ab blood group that a and b both you know they both express itself now when there is a concept of blood group or when there is when when we talk about the blood group so you know that rbc that is your red blood cell that is your erythrocyte it is going to express some antigens on its surface right this is let's say rbc contain antigen a on its surface antigen a on its surface rbc contain antigen a on its surface so that person will have blood group a if the antigen on rbc is a that person will, will have blood group a right and the plasma is going to have antibodies b plasma will contain antibody against b blood group do you know that class 11 isn't it class 11 isn't it so so rbc if rbc contain right so whatever antigen is going to is present on rbc that will decide the blood group and that will be decided by right which antigen should be there on rbc it will be decided by the genes right it will be decided by the genes so if rbc contain antigen a on its surface right then it means that individual is having a blood group right bache right bache that's what you need to remember okay okay but now when it is the ab blood group right when it is the ab blood group so both antigen clear both the antigens a and b 
they are simultaneously expressing themselves right so this is your a b blood group right that is universal recipient individuals of this blood group can receive blood from any other blood group right because a and b both are present and here if you talk about the plasma no antibodies are there in plasma fine no antibody is there in plasma clear bachche clear so actually na this blood group is controlled by right the gene for blood group is i fine the gene for blood group is what the gene for blood group is i okay okay what is the gene for blood group that is i clear yeah, that is i so now what's the case what's the scenario let's say one individual is having one parent is having this condition another parent is having this condition like one parent is homozygous for a blood group and another parent is homozygous for b blood group one parent is homozygous for a blood group another parent is homozygous for b blood group now bachche what what will be the scenario see ia ia ib ib this will be the case this will be the case so in that case you see all the individuals all the individuals will show ab blood group isn't it both the individuals will show ab blood group so see parents are homozygous for certain traits so f1 generation is showing right f1 generation is showing the character of both the parents a and b now if you need to check the ratio if you need to check the ratio for your f2 generation so now you know what you have to do again we'll take punnett square hai na again we will take punnett square see now tell me see a blood group b blood group and ab blood group so don't you think the ratio is again 1 is to 2 is to 1 for the phenotype as well for the genotype as well right for the phenotype as well for the genotype as well okay fine and same is for the sequel cell anemia bachche sequel cell anemia is the case when your rbc will become sequel shape i will explain it in pleurotropy right so here also you will see that individual can survive when this is the condition right when co dominance is there right co dominance is there like one allele is normal for normal rbc and one is for sequel shaped rbc so in that case an individual will be anemic but still survival is there if both will become hbs hbs then that combination can also be lethal that individual can die because of that anemia okay okay so the next thing that we need to discuss is your yes bachche next thing that we need to discuss is your multiple allelism and then we will read it from the ncrt here clear bachche then we will start the ncrt reading so the next topic that we need to understand is multiple allelism so uh, so bachche multiple allelism or multiple alleles the phenomena is allelism and multiple allele let me explain it ha huh. so multiple allele pleiotropy polygenic inheritance these are the topics where you know many students they make the mistake multiple allele pleiotropy and polygenic inheritance many times students they used to make the mistake here now let me explain this see normally that's what we have studied right even when we talk about the mendel what we have studied that a gene will contain two alleles that a gene will contain two alleles that's what we have discussed yes or no that in a gene what will be there two alleles are going to be there yes or no 
yes or no tell me bachche quickly hai na that's what we discuss na yes ki gene is having two alleles but it is not always the case sometimes genes they have they contain more than more than two alternative forms right they contain more than two alternative forms okay okay so that genes are your right so when see your gene is having your gene is having what it contains more than two alternative forms means it contains more than two alleles so so here can you see that multiple alleles are present for a particular gene yes or no when a gene is containing more than two alternative forms that is more than two alleles then you will see na that this gene contains multiple alleles for a particular character isn't it this gene contains multiple allele for a particular character and this phenomena is basically multiple allelism okay okay this phenomena is what it is multiple allelism clear bachche so more than two alternative form of a gene is multiple allele and multiple allele as multiple alleles are formed because of mutation let me write it here okay this is important multiple alleles are formed due to mutations so mutation means sudden changes and these mutations will give us different different forms fine fine and this is a very important point this is a very important point right you will see multiple alleles in the population only right nandini where will you see these multiple alleles you are going to see or you are going to detect them only in the population so multiple alleles can be detected in a population and bachche they are present on same locus on that chromo uh, homologous pair of chromosome right in that homologous pair of chromosome they are present on the same locus as well this is also another important point fine this is also another important point right so they are located on the same locus of homo log uh, homologous chromosome wait fine i'll explain it and these points are important to answer the assertion and reason based question fine to answer the assertion and a reason based question okay okay fine chalo so 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 let me give you one example now as i said you know about the karl landsteiner of course i told you that karl landsteiner is the one who discovered the abo blood grouping system right who discovered the abo blood grouping system and the students of karl landsteiner right students of karl landsteiner b castello and sterling they gave us a idea about the ab uh, blood group right so actually bachche the gene for blood group is i fine gene for blood group is what gene for blood group is your i it is i clear what is it it is i now so what ma'am so gene is i and this gene i is having uh, after mutation it is having many forms actually it is having three alleles do you know that it is having three alleles or you can also write it like this so this allele is for a blood group this is for b blood group and this is for your o blood group it is the recessive case it is for your o blood group clear bachche it is for your o blood group yes or no so can i write it like this can i write it like this so it is dominant it is also dominant fine and it is also recessive it is also recessive so how many alleles do we have how many alleles do we have for the blood group we have three alleles how many alleles do we have for the blood group we have three alleles for a character right one character and how many alleles are there three alleles are there 
D alleles are there. So when there is the multiple allelism, in the case of multiple allelism, this is the formula that you need to remember. I know many of you, you know, don't like it, ma'am. You are teaching us beyond NCERT, but it will simplify your questions. Okay, okay, it will simplify your question. This is the formula that you need to remember. N n plus one over two. So here, bache, here, bache, n is the n is equals to number of allele n is equals to number of alleles okay and this is used to check the to calculate the genotype in the case of multiple alleles fine in the case of multiple alleles if you want to check the genotype right genotype you know na genotype you know na so if you want to calculate the genotype this is the formula that you can use and here n is the number of alleles now what is the meaning here like let's say if you are checking it for blood group so as i said blood group is having three alleles so it will be three three plus one over two right so it is going to be six so number of possible genotypes are six number of possible genotypes are six yes or no yes or no so let me tell you about that so it will be ia ia homozygous for a blood group it can be homozygous for uh, sorry heterozygous for a blood group it can be homozygous for b blood group it can be heterozygous for b blood group it will be your a and b as well co dominance and it will be your o blood group so the genotypes so see six genotypes are there so it is homozygous a blood group that's heterozygous A blood group. That's homozygous for B blood group. That condition is heterozygous for B blood group. Here it will be AB which is showing co-dominance and this will be your O blood group. So number of possible genotypes are number of possible genotypes are number of possible genotypes are six but if i talk about the phenotype like nandini is saying right phenotype four isn't it a sorry phenotype is four a blood group b blood group a b and o but the genotype is six so that kind of questions can come in your final need paper fine that kind of questions can come in your final need paper it is the example of your multiple right it is the example of your multiple elite and it is also for you know some rabbit color also so now your second homework is in the comment section you will tell me about the another example of multiple elite okay you are going to tell me about the another example of multiple allele now come back to this point i i said that multiple allele can be detected in a population what is the meaning of that now see we humans we have only a pair of allele you know it right we just have a pair of allele like let's say my blood group is ab blood group actually my blood group is ab blood group i am universal recipient okay my blood group is what ab so it means you know that i have two chromosomes one is from my mother another is from my father so father or mother they are giving a or b blood group to me so ultimately if you talk about individuals if you talk about individuals so you will see only one allele you are only you are going to see only two alleles right you are only going to see two alleles yes or no yes or no only two alleles will be seen in a particular individual let's say if your blood group is a blood group so obviously either you are have this condition like your blood group is homozygous a or your blood group is heterozygous a but ultimately the story is same you will have only two alleles for that character right but if you will uh, see the population if you will see many people some will have a blood group some will have b some will have a b some will have o blood group so that's why we used to say that multiple alleles can be detected in a population right even if that trait is having multiple alleles the single individual will have only two alleles for that particular character right single individual will have only two alleles for a particular character clear bache
Abdesh clear? Sure? So that's what multiple parallelism is. So now let's quickly revise it here from NCRT and then we will start the next important topic that is your pleiotropism. Fine, that is your pleiotropism. So they are saying that till now we were discussing crosses where F1 resembled either of the two parents. Of course, right, either dominant or recessive or it was in between. But in the case of co-dominance, F1 generation resembles both the parents. Clear? So, good example is different type of red blood cells that determine ABO blood grouping in human beings. So, you know that ABO blood groups are controlled by gene I. As I said, bache, so plasma membrane of RBC has sugar polymers that protrude from its surface and the kind of sugar is controlled by the gene. So, basically they are saying the sugar molecules that will protrude out from its surface. Like this is the RBC. So basically the sugar molecule that they are discussing is nothing, it is the antigen, right? It is the antigen which is present on RBC surface and that antigen will decide the blood group. Clear bache? Clear bache? That will decide the blood group, isn't it? Isn't it? And that will be controlled by the gene of course, that which genes do we have? So gene I is having three alleles, I told you that. So A and B produce a slightly different forms of sugar while allele I does not produce any sugar. When you talk about the O blood group, there is no antigen on RBC surface. So, it, is, it means there is no sugar there. Okay, so in diploid organism, each person possesses any two of these three alleles. That's my point, right? That's the MCQ. Each person, each diploid organism will have only two alleles for that particular case, right? For that multiple alleles. Clear, bache? Clear, bache? Sure. Sure, sure, sure. So when I, A and I, B, they are present together, they both express their own types, right? Their own types of sugar. This is because of co-dominance. And here you guys can see the genotype as well, the phenotype as well. Fine. The genotype as well, the phenotype as well. Okay. Okay. So you know that six different combinations of genotypes are there and four phenotypes are there and such questions are there in your final neat examination. You can even solve the previous year questions. Fine. You can even solve the previous year question. So next topic is multiple alleles. So here you can see that there are more than two alleles. Okay. Governing the same character. Okay. So since an individual contain only two alleles, right? Multiple alleles can be found only when population studies are made. So in assertion reason based questions such things can be asked. In your statement based questions such questions can be asked. So that's important. That's very important. Very important. Please mark it in your NCRT. Okay. Please mark it in your NCRT. Done? Sure? Yes, bache. Are you sure? So can we start the next topic? Can we start the next topic? That is your pleiotropy or pleiotropic gene. That's our next topic, right? Pleiotropic gene. Now what is the meaning of pleiotropic? Right, it means multiple phenotypic effects of a gene. What is it? Multiple phenotypic effects of a gene. But show, now please pay attention here. Okay, and let me tell you genetics is a topic if you understand it once, if you are aware, right, that which concept you have to apply there. Trust me, there is no need to cram it then. You just need to revise it time to time. That's all. Okay, you really need to revise it time to time. Okay, there is no need to cram this particular chapter. If you know what is law of dominance, what is segregation, independent assort assortment, everything is simplified for you then. Okay, if you know what is the meaning of co-dominance, then obviously you have to, you know, put some efforts to remember the ratios. But I made it easy for you by uh, telling you about the product rule and everything. Okay, okay, so the topics are literally easy. This chapter is easy and this is a very scoring chapter. Same time of type of questions will come again and again. 
fine and even i know you people find pedigree analysis topic difficult and many time uh, i think from many years they are not even asking the question from pedigree analysis but let me tell you i will make it easy for you even i will make that topic easy for you and that is actually easy you just need to see two to three main characters okay sorry two to uh, two to three characters if you know about them if you will observe it in your pedigree chart then it will be all easy for you then fine so from this chapter one question for sure will come from this part that we are discussing today one question will for sure come from the disorders part one question will for sure come from the laws part so these are the three fixed questions right three fixed question one from the mutation four fixed questions okay okay so do not miss such topics fine do not must miss such topics so so what what we are discussing pleiotropy multiple phenotypic effects of a gene as of now what we have studied that this is a gene a and gene a is controlling one character that's what we have studied normally but now here what is happening our gene a is not controlling only one character it is controlling okay it is controlling character one it is controlling character two character three character four it can be anything so basically earlier we were saying that one gene is controlling only one character but now what are we saying we are saying that one gene is controlling many characters so can we say that here we are discussing the multiple phenotypic effects of a gene okay can i say so that pleiotropic genes are the one which controls more than one character or you can say that multiple phenotypic effects of a gene yes multiple phenotypic effects of a gene you can define it in both the ways hai na you can use both the definitions you can simply say multiple phenotypic effects of a gene or you can simply say genes that control more than one character genes that control more than one character is that clear yes is that clear so this is what pleiotropy is okay this is what pleiotropy is and see if you talk about the ncrt there are different different examples jaise in ncrt they have given the example of your phenyl ketonuria right you have the example of your sickle cell anemia you have the example of the pea plant where you talk about the size of the starch grain and even if you talk even you talk about the seed as well okay the seed shape and the size of starch grain is located by see size of starch grain and seed shape in pea plant is controlled by same gene located on chromosome number 7 right located on chromosome number 7 is that clear yes bachche so the size of the star, star synthesis in pea seeds right and even the size of the and even the seed shape is controlled by the same gene so this is the example of pleiotropy where one gene is not controlling one character but it is controlling multiple characters right where it is controlling multiple characters so we will start with the phenyl ketonuria so what do you know about the phenyl ketonuria yes what do you know about the phenyl ketonuria and yes here i'll ask one question that do you think uh, can you tell me the reason that why is it possible that one gene can control many phenotypes thank you bachche sajada thank you so much can you tell me like how is it possible that one gene is controlling many characters one gene is controlling many characters how is it possible let me give you the example here see that's very simple now you know ultimately the central dogma of information i told you now that dna will form mrna and your mrna is going to form the protein 
isn't it dna will form mrna and the mrna is going to form the protein now this protein is nothing it is just the enzyme right this protein is nothing but it is the enzyme right it is the enzyme now let's say this enzyme is involved in multiple uh, pathways uh, or you can say that in the different metabolic pathways it is involved obviously so if it is involved in multiple phenotypic uh, multiple metabolic pathways or in different metabolic pathways so let's say if there is a mutation in the gene a which is forming this particular protein let's say that there is mutation in the gene a which is forming this protein so if there is mutation this protein will accordingly change it it will also be mutated it is going to affect all those metabolic pathway so obviously that particular character we can observe this that particular character is controlling different pathways and that's why different phenotypic results are there so that's why we say that it is the one gene which is controlling different phenotypic effects and that's how you can study it okay vidisha that's how you guys can study it so the best example is of phenyl ketonuria which is there in humans okay okay so there is one gene which codes for the enzyme phenyl alanin hydroxylase remember so gene there is one gene that encodes an enzyme phenyl alanine hydroxylase clear it is phenyl alanine hydroxylase right we have a gene that is going to Yes, bache. We have a gene that is going to encode an enzyme, and that enzyme is bache phenylalanine hydroxylase. Clear? So, one second, Anlin. So, first of all, let me thank you all, right, for giving your time for watching this lecture. If you are finding it useful, I am really grateful because uh, I am teaching it because I want you people to see it, of course. right i want to help you out in your neat preparation so if by any way by any chance if it is helping you out i am very lucky i am blessed thank you so much now come back to this topic again so what am i saying that there is a gene in our body right we are talking about the humans here and that gene is encoding an enzyme phenyl alanine hydroxylase now let's say if there is a mutation here right if there is a mutation here you won't get this in you won't get this particular enzyme Yes, you won't get this particular enzyme. Thank you, Ellen. Thank you so much for watching. Do subscribe our channel. Yes or no, guys? Please tell me this is going to happen here. Okay, let me uh, tell you here. Do you know about the amino acids? do you know about the amino acids we have discussed it in biomolecule chapter we have covered the chapter biomolecule remember alanine arginine asparagine aspartic acid cystine glutamine glutamic acid glycine histidine isoleucine leucine lysine methionine proline phenyl alanine right serine threonine tyrosine tryptophan valine is there right 20 amino acids that 20 amino acids we have discussed already i i gave it gave it to you as a task that you have to memorize the name of these 20 amino acids remember that remember so you know we have one amino acid that is known as your phenyl alanine right that is phenyl alanine and that amino acid will be converted to tyrosine and you know this particular enzyme your phenyl alanine hydroxylase it used to do that and you know where is your tyrosine used even for the formation of your skin pigment melanin do you know that this tyrosine is even used for the formation of your skin pigment melanin do you know that yes do you know that do you know that for skin pigment melanin this is the amino acid that you need okay right that you need this is the one role that i'm telling you one function i'm telling you so this tyrosine as i said it is used for the formation of melanin and not just melanin for the formation of some other hormones as well right for the formation of other hormones as well okay so now let's say if this enzyme is not there so phenyl alanine will not be converted to the tyrosine phenyl alanine will not be converted to the tyrosine yes or no it will not be converted into the tyrosine yes or no 
yes or no so they, this is the one effect that i'm telling you right now so let's say if it is not converting it into the tyrosine so the melanin production will also be affected hormone production wherever we need tyrosine that particular hormone will also not be formed yes or no it will also not be formed there yes or no yes or no these kind of things can occur these kind of things can occur so when there is the mutation in the gene which is forming phenyl alanine hydroxy phenyl alanine hydroxy lane lays you know what is going to happen the skin pigmentation can be there mental retardation is also there and hair reduction will also be there so see gene is one enzyme is one but these are the three changes that you will see these are the three changes that you are going to see reduction in hair you will see right reduction in hair you will see yes or no and other than that what are you going to see bache what are you going to see S skin pigmentation so for skin pigmentation i have already explained you i have already explained you about the skin pigmentation yes or no yes or no so see other things are also related right other things are also related clear 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 so phenyl alanine hydroxylase is very important for the metabolism of phenyl alanine bachche otherwise your phenyl alanine will be accumulated clear otherwise your phenyl alanine will be accumulated fine fine okay so so here what we are discussing it in the context of pleiotropy that in the pleiotropy one gene is controlling the phenot uh, one gene is having multiple phenotypic effects or one gene is controlling many characters so here i have given you one example and here i have explained it in context of the tyrosine only that see it will affect the melanin production and the hormone jaise one student is saying ki mam mental retardation because phenylalanine will not be converted to tyrosine it will get accumulated here and when it will get accumulated right it can cause the mental retardation actually it is having other metabolic reactions also which is not required for you so this condition right and you know what we call this condition as no doubt here i mentioned phenyl ketonuria phenyl ketonuria is the example of pleiotropy so actually this phenyl ketonuria it is an inborn right this phenyl ketonuria it is an inborn error in the metabolism you know it is an autosomal recessive disease it is an autosomal recessive disorder we will discuss it in our last class now we will discuss it autosomal recessive disorder it is an inborn error in metabolism okay so you have to study more about this yes you have to study more about this this what this phenyl ketonuria that's your homework okay that's your homework so it is also an autosomal recessive disorder fine autosomal recessive disorder so next example that we need to study here is your sickle cell anemia that is also an important example to understand right i will explain sickle cell anemia here only bachche next is sickle cell anemia see the name is explaining everything first of all write down it is also autosomal recessive disorder it is also autosomal recessive disorder but i know you don't know the meaning of autosomal yet but you know the meaning of recessive isn't it you don't know the meaning of autosomal yet but you know the meaning of recessive isn't it isn't it so when it comes to the recessive disorder any disorder which is recessive it can only express itself in this form or let's say if you are denoting that gene with the b alphabet so that is how it is going to express itself any recessive disorder can only express itself when it is present in homozygous recessive form so if sickle cell anemia is the recessive disorder so it will express itself in its homozygous recessive form now what exactly is the sickle cell anemia let me explain you that actually bachche you know when you talk about the hemoglobin even in the last class in the breathing and exchange of gases we studied it that hemoglobin is a quaternary protein having four polypeptide chains yes that's what we discuss 
when we talk about the hemoglobin you know that what is it it's a quaternary protein isn't it what is hemoglobin students it's a quaternary protein it is having four polypeptide chains right four polypeptide chains so that four polypeptide chains are two alpha chains and two beta two beta chains so when in beta chain see it's a polypeptide it's a polypeptide so sahiti it means it is made up of amino acids yes or no it's a polypeptide so it simply means that it is made up of right it is made up of yes it means na it is made up of your amino acids ultimately your amino acids they join and then they form the proteins na see many amino acid when they join together with the help of peptide bond then they form polypeptide chains isn't it when amino acids when they join together with the help of peptide bond then they form these polypeptide chains isn't it so when you talk about this uh sickle cell anemia so what is going to happen here in hemoglobin and especially in the beta chain of hemoglobin at sixth position this is very important okay at sixth position like let's say this is your beta chain of hemoglobin okay this is your beta chain of hemoglobin so at sixth position first amino acid second third fourth fifth and sixth at sixth position right your glutamic acid which is an amino acid of course right glutamic acid is replaced by okay glutamic acid is present here in normal condition it is replaced by valine fine it is replaced by valine okay it is replaced by valine so what exactly is the sickle cell anemia it is an autosomal recessive disorder here right your rbc will become sickle shaped actually what is happening here bachche you know that hemoglobin is having two alpha chains two beta chains two alpha chains two beta chains are there so in beta chain at sixth position normal conditions mein in normally right normally your glutamic acid is present so this glutamic acid is having this particular codon here that is your gag so it will be replaced by valine right why is it replaced of course because of the mutations right it is actually the point mutation we will discuss it in upcoming classes okay so it is actually the mutation that will occur and mutation will convert glutamic acid into the valine and ultimately what is going to happen your rbc will be the sickle shape now right your rbc is going to be the sickle shape now clear bachche clear so that is what sickle cell anemia is so now mutation in this gene it is controlling rbc shape it is controlling rbc shape plus it is also controlling your you know uh, liver metabolism your liver metabolism can affected if sickle cell anemia is there and moreover right it can also be associated with the blindness it is also associated with the eye functioning as well clear bachche clear 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 yes so this mutant hemoglobin right right so it will undergo polymerization under low oxygen tension so it will change the rbc sh shape it will make it sickle shape okay it is going to make it sickle shape are you getting it are you getting it yes or no are you getting it rbc will become sickle shape so here it is also affecting this part oxygen carrying capacity liver metabolism is affected it is also related with the eye blindness so basically uh, it is controlling more than one character so that's why it is the example of sickle cell anemia fine it is the example of sickle cell anemia so this topic we have to discuss it in detail sickle cell anemia yes we will also discuss it in mutations fine right because it is the example of point mutation so we will discuss it there as well but you have to remember it in pleiotropy also fine so next example is of your star sheath right this is also very important example to understand see occasionally a single gene product may produce more than one effect see they are saying occasionally what is happening the product of single gene product means that protein can produce more than one effect means see the language here is 
they have changed the language ultimately they are talking about the pleiotropy here abdesh what are they discussing here they are talking about the pleiotropy here so what are they saying they are just saying that a single gene product may produce more than one effect and which word they have used occasionally it is not a normal practice normally it is not happening but sometimes the product of some genes can produce more than one effect is that clear is that clear that's how you have to decode the ncrt bache fine that's how you have to decode the ncrt so for example starch synthesis in p seed is controlled by one gene it has two allele capital b and small p starch is synthesized effectively by bb homozygotes and therefore large starch grains are produced in contrast uh, in contrast this homozygotes recessive homozygotes they have lesser efficiency in starch synthesis so this is the example that they are explaining so in simple way if i have to show it and specially for starch grains specially for starch synthesis specially for what bache specially for the starch synthesis let me tell you gene b shows incomplete dominance do you know that gene b it shows incomplete dominance what will it do it will show incomplete dominance do you know how is it possible let me tell you we have capital b capital b we have small b small b so capital b will form large right capital b will form large starch grains this will form small starch grains and when that is the scenario like your heterozygous condition is there so you will get intermediate starch grains right intermediate grain size isn't it what will you get here you will get intermediate starch grain the size is intermediate clear so we are talking about a gene which is controlling the starch synthesis as well and the seed shape as well right and the same gene is also controlling the seed shape as well so one character clear one character clear here right so now for the shape of seed it is showing dominant recessive relationship okay for shape of seed it is showing dominant recessive relationship now what is the meaning here so see if this is the case capital b capital b you will see round seed shape okay and if it is small b small b you will see wrinkled seed shape okay and when the condition is this you will see again you will see round seed shape so basically b is controlling the starch synthesis as well it is controlling the shape of seed as well it is controlling the shape of seed as well and that's how it is going to work so large so here in the case of starch grain the intermediate like incomplete dominance will be there but here it is the dominant recessive relationship so one gene is controlling two character and it is also controlling two character it is also here interacting in two different ways fine it is here it is even interacting in two different ways are you getting it or not right and this is what given in ncrt let me explain it from ncrt bache so see they are saying that starch is synthesized by capital b capital b and small b small b and they also produce see small b small b is producing small starch grains after maturation of these seeds you will see capital b seeds are round you will see small b small b seeds are wrinkled and heterozygous are also round so b seems to be dominant allele but starch grain produced are intermediate size so ultimately whatever is written in this paragraph right i have explained the same thing in this way so now tell me isn't it easy to understand yes 
Don't you think that this part is now very easy to understand? So here the language is a bit confusing. Many times students, they, you know, they don't understand it. Ki what is happening? What is the starch grain and this like, what are they saying? Right. But now see, it's so simplified. Fine. It is so simplified. Now here you just need to focus on one thing that, okay, fine. If it is capital B, capital B, what will you get? Large starch grain and round seed shape. If it is small b, small b, you will get small starch grain and wrinkled seed shape. But if it is this heterozygous, you will get intermediate starch grain, but the seed shape is going to be round only. Right? Seed shape is going to be round only. So that's how you have to decode the NCRT again. Fine, that's how you have to decode the NCRT again. Now tell me doubt. Do you have any doubt? Sure. So that's what pleiotropy is. Okay. Right. That's what pleiotropy is. See. So therefore dominance is not an autonomous feature of a gene or the product. That it has information for it depends upon much on the gene product and the production of a particular phenotype from this product as it does not particular is does on the particular phenotype okay fine that's all okay okay so multiple allelism done pleiotropic gene done next topic is non-allelic interaction right next topic is also non-allelic interaction which is also known as intergenic Inter, inter means in between two genes. So it is also known as intergenic interaction. So here mainly no doubt we will be talking about the complementary genes and epistresses, but supplementary genes, additive genes, collaborative genes, your inhibitory genes, there are many things here. Fine. But epistresses is the most common thing that you need to remember, uh, most important thing that you need to remember. And here we will talk about the dominant epistresses as well. And we will be discussing about the recessive epistasis as well. Dominant epistasis as well as the recessive epistasis. Both we are going to discuss. And yes, this is very important. Okay, MCQ can come from this part. Fine. So here you will talk about two genes. Fine. What are you going to discuss? You are going to talk about the two genes. And let's start with the complementary genes here. You can just look at the ratio and you can say that whether it, what type of interaction is there. Okay. So complementary genes means, see, complementary genes. The genes which are complementing each other function. Right. They say like, uh, I know, I hope you guys have heard about it. Like some people used to say, no, that this particular hair accessories or the this particular accessories are going well with dress. Hena? Hena? Like if you are wearing something and you are taking a particular type of, you are wearing a particular type of jewelry with a particular dress, so it is complementing, like you are looking more and more beautiful, right, you are looking more beautiful, okay, both the things are complementing each other, sometimes you know it happens, like you, uh, you are in a particular dress, but you are not carrying proper jewelry or something, and you are not looking that good, like, it happens, right, right, so complementary, two things are complementing each other, they are enhancing each other's effect, that's what I can say, Right, like for an example, I'll give you the example of a gene. Gene C, right, we have to talk about two genes here. Gene C, obviously it will be having two forms, no? And gene P, again it will be having two forms, capital and small. Isn't it capital and small? Clear, bache? So it is a two pairs of non-allelic genes, right? When they are in a dominant state, they are going to enhance each other's effect that's what we need to discuss actually it is the example the example that i am going to give you now it is the example of flower color flower color of sweet pea sweet pea you know na lethyrus odoratus it is lethyrus species sweet pea it's sweet pea so here we are talking about the flower color what are we discussing? We are talking about the flower color. So in complementary genes, like see, 
two genes are going to interact together, then you will see the flower color there. What is happening, bache? Two genes are going to interact with each other, and then you will see a particular, then you will see the flower color there. Right? You will see the flower color there. Like, like let me give you the example. When it is this situation, Okay, when, see, when this is the genotype, okay, when this is the genotype, you will see flowers are colored. What will you see? You will see flowers are colored and when this is the genotype, You will see flower are colorless. Try to understand it. Okay. I am giving you the example. Example of lethyrus pieces. Right. I am talking about the sweet pea here. What am I saying? I am saying that the flower color is controlled by two genes. Okay. So these are two different genes. So can I say that it is the example of non-allelic interaction? Of course I can say so. Hey na? Of course I can say so. That it is the example of non-allelic interaction. Hey no? Hey no? So these are, uh, it is the example of non-allelic interaction. This is basically intergenic interaction. So I am writing few genotypes here. And all I am showing here is, see, when capital C and capital P both are present, when you will see that in a genotype, capital C, capital P, means when both the genes are present in their dominant state, then the flowers are colored then the flowers are colored but if if only one is dominant but another one is in recessive form one is dominant another is in recessive form one is dominant another is in recessive form one is dominant another is in recessive form still flowers are colorless okay so they are they are when they are together in their dominant state then they are complementing each other right then they are forming the colored flower right then they are giving that particular character otherwise they are not giving a particular character let me simplify it more just let's say two best friends are there right our chin to chin tea are there right we have our chin to chin tea uh oh just a minute We have chintu, two chintu chinti, or you can take the example of two chintus. They are saying when they are studying together, then only they will get 100% result. When they are studying alone, when they are individually, they are studying, they are just getting zero marks in their exam. It is more like that. Like when two friends, they are studying individually, they are not going for the group studies, then they are scoring zero, zero marks in their exam. But when they are studying together, then they are what they are getting, right? Right, what are they getting? They are getting... 100% marks. So, chin to chin to chin to chin to whatever example you want to take, you can take. This is the meaning of complementary genes. Clear? This is the meaning of complementary gene. And why is it so? Because, bache, let's say there is a raw material. Okay? When gene C is acting on it, when your gene C is acting on it, it gene C is making chromogen. Chromogen. Chromogen means color producing substance. Right? Chromogen means color producing substance right and when gene p when gene p is present it is forming a product which is converting this color producing substance into actually the color let's say anthocyanin so your flowers will appear colored flowers will appear colored why do we need why do we need such kind of scenario why do we need such things why because bache one gene will act on the raw material will convert it into a substance which can further form the color right that is chromogen and gene p when it will act on it it will form the color so they are they are dependent on each other na? right they need each other they need each other, right? One will form one particular product and other will do it. They say, let's say I have given you the example of two friends that when they are studying together, then only they are getting 100% result. Otherwise, zero, zero. Why? 
why is it so because let's say one one was explaining the topic to another right one was explaining the theoretical information to the one and another was explaining the numericals so together they are working so they are getting good result when they are working individually they are not able to now you got it now you got the example of complementary genes yes you got the example of uh, now you got what exactly is the meaning of complementary genes so they are complementing each other fine they are complementing each other so now if i have to draw the cross it is going to be very simple see uh colored colorless so one is homozygous dominant another is homozygous recessive so f1 individual that will be the genotype of f1 individual and that will be colored that will be colored too and now let's do the selfing let's go for the selfing okay so see you can tell me the ratios here so now which it is uh, two genes are there right two genes are there so how many gametes are they going to form tell me apply the formula tell me how many gametes are they going to form you have two you have two genes here so how many gametes they will form one parent will form four gametes one parent will so that there will be no confusion okay small p capital C or for small c okay so this is our small c so this will be small c capital P small c small p so let's write the gametes here capital C capital P capital C small c small p small c capital P now you tell me right you tell me so if this is the case flower will be colored or colorless flower will be colored or colorless this is the best practice for the genetics okay and uh, if this is the case flower will be colored or colorless Now you tell me please in this case flower will be colored or colorless in this case flower will be colored or colorless colored right in this case flower will be colored or colorless yes Priyanka quick in this case flower will be colored or colorless flower will be colored here fine and here here flower is colored or colorless tell me here flower is colored or colorless in this case, I am asking, flower is colored or colorless? Exactly, flower is going to be colorless here. Here also flower will be colorless. And uh, you know, and in this case also flower will be colorless. So when you calculate, when you check the ratio, it is going to be 9 is to 7 phenotypic ratio. Okay, 9 is to 7 is the phenotypic ratio. So now see, the ratio of this dihybrid cross is not like 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1 like Mendel was saying. Because here you are seeing a different phenomena, you are observing a different phenomena that is complementary genes where two genes are, right? They are, two genes are required for expressing a particular trait bache right this is the example of non allelic interaction fine so here for the complementary genes this is this is going to be the ratio that is 9 is to 7 right colored flowers are 9 colorless flowers are 7 colored flowers are 9 colorless flowers are 7 so is that clear so next is very important that is epistasis and here you will talk about the dominant and the recessive epistasis so this topic is important not given in NCRT, but question used to come from epistasis, right? This is the topic that you really need to do. 
okay it can come in your final examination that is epistasis so tell me do you know about the epistasis yes today actually i do not have any class after your class na just say morning tomorrow morning also we are going to meet at 10 am so then after your class i have class in avengers batch so because of that i have to you know rush okay i have to rush but now today i do not have any class after your class so i am feeling quite free so that's why you know the class flow the session flow is very smooth right session flow is quite smooth i'm not at all bothered that i have to finish it quickly i have to go for another class nahi today it's all chill and no, it's all chill chill okay so now epistasis so one thing should be clear in your mind that here you are talking about again you are talking about the interaction of two different genes that how two different genes are affecting each others effect first point clear hai na first point clear now when you are talking about the epistasis here bachche one gene let's say your gene a right and let's say we have your gene b let's consider two examples okay let's consider two examples one example is of gene a another example is of gene b fine so i am saying that they are showing epistasis now what is epistasis here in epistasis one gene is you know not letting the another gene to express itself in its presence basically let's say gene a is masking the expression of masking the expression of gene b in its presence this is what epistasis is so what is epistasis right it's a type of interaction in which one gene in its presence is not allowing the another gene to show its expression it is basically masking its expression it is covering its its expression it is not letting that particular gene to express itself that is the meaning of this epistasis clear that is the meaning of this epistasis one gene is preventing the expression of another non allelic gene okay okay one gene is preventing the expression of another non allelic gene so if i'm saying another non allelic gene so obviously it is the these are the alleles of another gene of different gene fine so because gene a is masking the expression of gene b so can i say that that your gene a is the epistatic gene gene a is the epistatic gene can i say so the one which is masking the expression of another will be your epistatic gene and here the expression of gene b is mark, masked so gene b is your hypostatic gene gene b is your hypostatic gene please read it right please read it please take the screenshot and please read it again and if there is doubt do let me know i'll explain it again yes i will explain it again please let me know then yes bachcho hypostatic not hyper it's hypostatic okay so one gene is masking the expression of another what is the meaning of masking one gene is not uh, letting another gene to express itself i'll give you another simple example just in sometimes in families you know it happens na like you let's say you are scared of your father or mother right or mother or any other specific person this is let's say you are scared of your father so whenever your father used to come you are not able to say anything you are not able to express your feeling if your father is saying he do this you will be like okay but later on to your mother you used to tell ki mama i don't like this please you convey it to father or something like that 
right i am not saying these days these days to you know parents are quite friendly okay but you know that in some families this is still the scenario in the presence of father usually you know they are especially boys they are not able to say what they want to hai na same is the case here in the expression of father that chintu is saying nothing chintu is like okay papa okay papa okay papa that's what epistasis is so father is the epistatic gene chintu is the hypostatic gene that's all simple it is one gene is masking the expression of another one gene is masking the expression of another that's all simple that's simple now i said that there will be two things here in epistasis one is the dominant epistasis and even the ratio varies okay one is the dominant epistasis and another one is the recessive epistasis one is dominant epistasis another is the recessive epistasis clear these are the two things that we have dominant and the recessive dominant and the recessive hai na so now let's say one gene is epistatic what is the meaning of dominant epistasis here that one gene is epistatic in its dominant state one gene is epistatic in its dominant state can you just tell me when a gene is dominant right which genotype which genotype is the dominant genotype yes avdesh which genotype is the dom dominant genotype this genotype this genotype and which gene the genotype is the recessive genotype in which genotype you will see the recessive character that's the thing that's the thing now i have given you the example of uh, gene a and b but what i mentioned i just said that gene a is the epistatic one it is epistatic over gene b gene b is actually the hypostatic one so if it is the dominant epistasis a dominant epistasis if it is the dominant epistasis then you know what will be the case what will be the scenario do you know what will be the case what will be the scenario yes yes let's say uh you are taking the example of the best example you know for epistasis we study the best example is of summer squash you know the best example that we study here is of summer squash your cucurbita summer squash your cucurbita its color that is the best example to study the epistasis so gene y let's say there is a gene y gene y is the epistatic gene gene y is the epistatic gene gene y is for the yellow color right it is for the yellow color means if this is the scenario capital y capital y capital y small y that fruit will have yellow color okay and if it is small y small y that fruit will have white color this part clear this part clear yes this part clear that it will be having the white color simple or let's forget about the white color as of now but tell me this part clear we are taking the example here we are taking the example of summer squash we are taking the example of summer squash and the botanical name is your cucurbita cucurbita pepo i guess i don't remember the species name now okay so i am saying that gene y is the epistatic one and gene y is for the yellow color another example that i am taking is of gene w and it used to give green color fine it used to give green color clear clear and if it is the this condition if this is the condition you will see white color if this is the condition you will see white color right if not green then white in recessive condition if not yellow then white in recessive condition understood first of all tell me understood everyone here in the class understood or do you have any doubt sure sure okay so now if it is the dominant epistasis so let's say 
let me check now whether you got it or not. Now, if this is the combination, or this is the combination, or this is the combination, Now you tell me, here if this is the scenario, what will be the color of fruit? What will be the color of fruit? Guys, I am repeating it again. I am giving you the example of summer squash, that is your cucurbita. Here you will see epistasis. What type of epistasis you will see? Dominant epistasis. Now what is the meaning of dominant epistasis? Dominant epistasis means if your epistatic gene is in dominant condition, means if it is having homozygous dominant genotype or heterozygous gen dominant genotype, it will not let your recess home hypostatic gene to express itself. It will not let your hypostatic gene to express itself. That's what I am trying to say. Fine, fine. So, if capital Y is epistatic in dominant state, so if capital Y, capital Y is there, capital Y, small y is there, it will not allow W to express. In its presence, W cannot express itself. This is the meaning. Now, see, if this is the scenario, what will be the color of fruit? You tell me. What will be the color of fruit, Avdesh? Those who are saying yellow green, it is not possible. Sahiti, if you are saying yellow green, it is not possible. Why? Because Y is epistatic over W. In the presence of Y, W will not express itself. Right, so here the fruit is going to be yellow, that is the meaning of epistasis, that is the meaning of epistasis, it is not yellow green, it is going to be yellow only, it is going to be yellow only, okay. It is going to be yellow only, okay, or you can say that yes. Because it is the dominant epistasis, it is just like the supplementary genes, it will be white, it will be white because the expression of W will not come in the presence of your, in the presence of your Y, right? In the presence of your Y, the expression of W should not come. Ultimately, that's the scenario here, okay? That's the scenario here. Are you getting it? Yes or no? Yes or no? It is going to be white actually, not yellow, it is going to be white. Like see, if this is the case, it will be white. If this is the case, it will be yellow. If this is the case, it will be green. And if this is the case, again it will be white. This is your epistasis. So one in the presence of Y, W is not expressing itself. Okay, W is not expressing itself. So it will be white. White here also it will be white, right? Here also it will be white. Here it will be yellow. Here it will be because this is the capital W, and here it is small Y. Then it will be green. Why? Because it is dominant epistasis and Capital W is there, but Y is not is in capital state, so it is green and it is again white. Got it? It is again white. This is your dominant epistasis. So when this epistatic gene, it is in the dominant state, it will not allow the another gene to express itself. So when your capital Y is dominant, it will not allow the green to come over, right? So it will become white, right? Here also it will become white. Here also it will become white because here, why is it green? Because here it is capital W and Y is in small, that's why it is green. Why is it yellow here? Because W is in its recessive state also, hai na? and only capital Y is present there, that's why yellow. That's why yellow. So ultimately, the main agenda of this Y is to not let W express. Y is like even, even if I'm not giving the yellow color, but the green should not come. Okay, but the green should not come. Fine.
that's the scenario the green should not come okay doubt any doubt here so white and the yellow fruit is there right white and the yellow fruit is there and yes 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 one more thing bache yes one more thing here just a minute and yes even if this is the case na it is not going to be green even if this is the case na it is not going to be green it is again white yes and it is going to be green only when it both are in recessive form na then it will be green i jumbled it so this is going to be green ha ah, this will be white again that's all that's the scenario that's what you need to remember no that's what you need to remember this is your dominant epistasis okay so if right if in that case your w will only give green color when it is in it is in homozygous recessive condition okay when it is in homozygous recessive condition otherwise it will not give green color okay it will not give green color so w is epistatic so uh, y is epistatic over w right so that is why whenever y and w they are together present right you will always get you will always get what what will you get you are going to get the white color only clear bachche clear bachche so when see here why do we have green color because this is the scenario even your y is in even your y is in recessive form it is the example of dominant epistasis na and y is in recessive form that is why w is able to express itself that is why you can see green color otherwise otherwise in all the cases here also here also you will see the white color right here also you will see the white color fine fine bachche so so that's what you need to know that's what you need to revise that's what you need to understand still if there is doubt do let me know so here the ratio is going to be that's your homework again for dominant epistasis that's the ratio this is what you need to this is what you need to solve now fine this is what you need to solve this is the dominant epistasis this is the dominant epistasis so the example is summer squash what is the example the example is your summer squash so anyone in the class who can give me the example of recessive epistasis anyone here in the class who can give me the example of recessive epistasis any example that you know any example about the recessive epistasis anyone here in the class this is dominant epistasis see when it is the recessive epistasis it will be 9 is to 3 is to 4 and here you will discuss the color of the mice color also you can discuss that is also the example very good flower color uh 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 mice color you can discuss a goaty black and albino okay a goaty black and albino so that is your homework okay you will do it and in the next class i will ask you if there is any doubt here you have to tell me so it is a recessive epistasis uh, recessive epistasis let's say here if this is the epistatic gene it should be in its recessive form then only the expression then only it can mask the expression of w let's say if i'm taking the example of y and w so if y is in is in its recessive form then only it can mask the expression of w otherwise it cannot okay otherwise it cannot but it is not given in ncert but that's important and you have to put some efforts to you know know it you have to
फाइन सो रिसेसिव एपिस्टेसिस इज योर होमवर्क रिसेसिव एपिस्टेसिस इज योर होमवर्क सो माउस जीन्स कैन बी देर सो दैट एग्जाम्पल यू कैन कंसिडर ओके फाइन श्योर सो दैट इज योर होमवर्क एंड जस्ट टू अवॉइड एनी कंफ्यूजन ओके सो लेट्स लेट्स ड्रॉ दिस क्रॉस फाइन लेट्स सॉल्व इट सो इफ दिस इज द सिनेरियो वॉट विल बी द कलर येस वॉट विल बी द कलर ऑफ द फ्रूट इफ दिस इज द सिनेरियो वॉट विल बी द कलर ऑफ द फ्रूट प्लीज टेल मी please tell me so see i told you now y is for yellow color y is for yellow color small y is for green color right but y in its dominant form epistatic over w it will not allow the w and even small w to express okay it will not allow them to express fine so y epistatic gene so w uh, so uh, y is epistatic over the w this is what you can consider or you can take it in an opposite way that w is epistatic over y whatever is uh, there in your head you can go accordingly fine you can go accordingly it is your choice that what you want to take fine it's your choice let's say we are uh, we are considering it like this that y is for yellow y is for green and your w is epistatic w is epistatic over capital y and as well as small y now now do it like this ultimately the ratio is going to be same so do it like this so obviously it will be having white color and now if this is the scenario it will be having green color why why is it so why because bachche this epistatic gene is not in its dominant state that's why small y is able to express itself that is green color small y is able to express itself that is green color and here when i was giving you the example no so i was saying that w is for the green color so here actually capital w for green small for uh, sorry capital w for small w for green capital for yellow so this is how you can consider right so we actually we are just changing now earlier i was saying y is dominant over w now i am saying that your w is dominant over y now solve it now solve it the ratio is almost going to be same okay so now when you will have f1 individual what will be the color of the fruit in the f1 individual what will be the color of the fruit tell me in f1 individual what will be the color of fruit i am saying y is dominant over sorry w is dominant over y so in f1 what will be the color of fruit yes shiva it is going to be white it is going to be white fine why because w is in capital form it is in dominant form it is masking the expression of y y is not expressing itself y is not giving the yellow color it is simply giving the white color this is what your w is making it to do because w is mainly responsible for that white white color that's why w is responsible for that white color actually this is the common example and this is the common case in the summer squash that mostly you will see it is white few are green or yellow right so it is the epistasis clear it is the epistasis just leave this part ha ah, focus on this particular example only fine so now let's make the punnett square you please tell me about the gametes i'll write accordingly and you will tell me about the ratios so w is epistatic over y that's why we are getting uh, the expression white here so in summer squash this is the scenario and if you have to take that example where you are saying ki y is dominant over w so mostly you will see yellow color not the white color then you will see yellow color more ratio is going to be same in both the cases so what will be the gametes very good priyanka it will be capital w capital y capital w small y right small w capital y 
small w small y same here so You please draw it. So you have to practice it more and more. That's what we have. That's what we have. Shiva Bache, I am saying Y is dominant over yellow. Y, uh, sorry, W is, uh, again and again I am saying Y, no. W is epistatic. It's not dominant. It is epistatic over Y. So, Y, you know that it can give two expressions, yellow color or green color. And W is giving the white only. W is giving the Shiva white only. So, Y is giving yellow or green. But, W is epistatic over Y. Here in this example, I am saying your Y is hypostatic gene. Here in this particular example, what am I saying? That Y is hypostatic gene. So, if W is present in its dominant state, that is capital W, capital W or capital W, small w. So, it will not let this Y to express its yellow or green color. It will not let this Y to express its yellow or green color. Actually, this is the common example in summer squash. In the thing, the thing that I was explaining earlier, that is not in the case of your summer squash. That example you can take generally, right? Then ratio will again be same. 9 is to 3 is to 4. Oh, sorry, uh, in dominant that ratio will be 12 is to, yes, but 12 is to, what will be the ratio? 12 is to 3 is to 1, okay? Okay, so just look at it. Now, solve this Shiva, you will get the answer of your question. Now tell me, what will be the fruit color here? Capital W, capital Y. What will be the fruit color here? What will be the fruit color here? What will be the fruit color here? White. Why? Why is it white? Why not yellow? Because W is present in its dominant state and it is masking the expression of Y. Okay. Here also, same story. Same story. For, for white, I am writing W only. Okay. Here already it is in recessive state. It is also white. It is also white. 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 Now come to this part. Okay. Now your, yes. Now your epistatic gene is in its homozygous recessive condition and your hypostatic gene in, is in its dominant condition. Now what will be the color here? What will be the color here? Now you tell me. What will be the color here? Nandini Govinda. Priyanka, seriously is it green? Look at it very carefully. It's capital Y. It should be yellow. Why yellow? Why not white now? Because your W is in recessive form and it is the example of dominant epistasis. So, dominant epistasis means when your W is in this form, in homozygous dominant state and in heterozygous dominant state, then only it will give that particular expression. Clear? Clear? So, here also the same story, yellow color. Here also the same story, yellow color. Okay? Yellow color. That's why it's yellow. And now here, again it's white here again it's white and now see again your look at it again w is in recessive form and y is also in recessive that's why it is showing the green color now it's understood that's why it is showing the green color now it's understood so 1 2 3 4 12 
white three yellow one green that's the example of summer squash and dominant epistasis okay so if it will be recessive epistasis so w needs to be in this form then it will not let this to express it will not let this to express it will not let this to express okay if it will be recessive epistasis because in that case epistatic genes need to be in recessive form that's the difference only okay that's the difference only this is what you need to solve now clear shiva now your doubts clear okay earlier now i was just mixing it so if i have to do it like this now that y is dominant over w y is epistatic sorry y is epistatic over w okay then 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 i have to give some other expression to w right so in summer squash actually that's the scenario you can take that example also you can take any uh, you know that uh, any other example or uh, any other example you guys can take you can talk about any animal or any plant fine so in the summer squash uh, in the summer squash specifically this particular example is there in the case of your cucurbita okay in the case of your cucurbita fine fine so w is epistatic over y in cucurbita and if you have to take example where y is epistatic over w so you can just change you know characters simple as that fine simple as that so now the next topic that we need to understand is polygenic inheritance and here you need to talk about the tri hybrid cross fine so the word is poly means many genic means genes so here you are talking about the inheritance where you are going to talk about many genes which are controlling one character so actually what is happening in polygenic inheritance many genes are controlling one character many genes are responsible for one character getting it they are responsible for one character see what we have start and it is also the quantitative inheritance here na expression depends upon the number of dominant alleles okay here the expression depends upon the number of dominant alleles okay so before discussing the polygenic inheritance let's compare bachche i told you na students make mistake here so see when the scenario is multiple allelism uh, when it is the multiple allelism okay so then bachche one gene is having more than two alleles isn't it in that case one gene is having more than two alleles when it is pleiotropy then we are saying gene is only one but it is controlling many characters that's why we are saying many phenotypic effects of a gene that's why we are saying many phenotypic effects of a gene but when it is the polygenic inheritance what is it polygenic inheritance so here you have one character character is only one okay character is here gene is one and the characters were many but here the character is one and many genes let's say your gene a your gene b your gene c they are controlling one character they are controlling one character got it many genes are controlling one character the difference clear so multiple allele is saying which is the example of allelic interaction here it is the example of non allelic interaction or again allelic interaction it is not non allelic it is also allelic interaction and here you are just talking about many genes it is polygenic inheritance it is quantitative inheritance fine so one gene more than two alleles one gene is controlling many character many character one character is controlled by many genes that's why polygenic inheritance fine 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 sure sure bachche 
so here in polygenic traits you will see that phenotype reflects the contribution of each allele here what will you see that phenotype reflects the contribution of many alleles like here you will see the addition additive effects we are going to see bachi what will we see additive effects we are going to see now what is the meaning of this particular point see i am saying phenotypic oh sorry phenotype yes phenotype reflects the contribution of many alleles means phenotype means external appearance right so that external appearance is the result of many alleles here the best example that you can study is skin color right in the case of skin color in in case of our height right human height is also the result of this polygenic inheritance many genes are controlling it skin color is controlled by many genes okay skin colors uh, is controlled by many genes so color of skin in human even the height and even bachche kernel color of wheat is also regulated by polygenes okay right kernel color of wheat is regulated by polygenes now let me explain this part and yes here also you have formula that is n n plus 1 do you know this formula is used for what here also we have the formula the formula is right the formula is to uh, uh, it is actually 2 n plus 1 not n n plus 1 it is actually 2 n plus 1 yes this is the formula here and formula is to calculate number of phenotypes fine formula here is to calculate number of phenotypes n is equals to number of polygenes here n is equals to number of polygenes here let me compare it see so here the formula was n n plus 1 over 2 so you know that this formula was calculating the number of genotype isn't it and here the formula is 2n plus 1 it is for calculating the number of phenotype so do not make mistake here okay do not make mistake here here it is for number of genotype here it is for number of phenotype n is the number of polygenes now i'll give you one example when you talk about the skin color in the case of human skin color it is controlled by three genes how many genes are responsible for our skin color three genes number of dominant if number of dominant allele increase it will right it will darken our complexion if number of dominant allele is less and recessive alleles are more that person will be having fair complexion okay that person is going to have fair complexion now number of polygene n is equals to 3 right so it will be 2 into 3 plus 1 so it will be 1 number of phenotypes will number of phenotype is here is 1 here what is the number of phenotype number of phenotype is 1 here is like negro black dark right very dark brown dark brown will be there like this so total seven phenotypes are going to be there so first of all tell me is that clear it is quantitative inheritance where each allele is going to contribute in that uh, phenotype here many genes are controlling one character i have given you three example skin color even the human height even the kernel color of wheat is also regulated by polygenes and this is the formula for calculating the number of phenotypes here okay okay so phenotype reflects the contribution of many alleles phenotype reflects the contribution of many alleles so here the example that we need to study is of tri hybrid cross right actually for skin color you have to understand the tri hybrid cross just in see this is the scenario okay so one parent is homozygous dominant another parent is homozygous recessive so this parent the complexion will be this right it will be negro black and here it is going to be here it is going to be white here it is going to be white and in such scenario you know that f1 generation will be this it is not like either parent it is also not like either parent it is intermediate complexion right it is intermediate or you can say that mulatto 
right you will say that mulatto getting it or not yes or no this will be the expression here the, the, this will be the uh, phenotype here yes so intermediate it is going to be mulatto so now you know that what we have to do for f2 generation we have to do the selfing of f1 right what we have to do we have to do the selfing of f1 so now here first of all tell me about the number of gametes here just tell me about the number of gametes everyone priyanka what will be the number of gametes here number of gametes i am asking right now right number of gametes i have given you the formula in the last class isn't it you know about the formula if you have to calculate the number of gametes here types of gametes here types of gamete what will you do it will be 2n gametes will be 2n n is equals to number of traits so it will be 8 it is going to be 8 yes it is going to be 8 and what about the number of zygotes here what about the number of zygotes so if you want to check number of zygotes so it will be gametes 2 8 2 that is 64 that is 64 isn't it what it is going to be 64 so right done so it should be 64 so can you just tell me about the gametes give it a try can you just tell me about the gametes which gametes are going to form here let's solve it bache can you just tell me about the gametes ha huh? anyone which gametes will be there Yes, is it possible? Is it possible? Yes or no? Is it possible? Yes or no? Now, A, B, uh, okay, A, B, capital C, A, B, small c. Yes, is it possible? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5th. Sixth. Okay, that one is done. Tell me, these are the gametes or not? You can again apply the fork method here. Right? A, B and C. A, capital B, small c. A, small b, capital C. A, small b, yes, small c. Okay, A is capital. Now, when your A is small, A is in homozygous recessive condition, right? This is what you have decided. So, A will go with, okay, A will go with capital B as well as capital C. It will go with capital B and here it should be, just a minute, small c, isn't it? Isn't it? And then again, A, next, what will be the case? Tell me, very good Nandini. Next, what will be there? So, it will be small a, capital B, capital C, small a, capital B, but small c. So, it will be small a, it can be, yes, small b, capital C, it will be this. These are total 8 gametes. Yes or no? These are total 8 gametes. Yes. 
just check it and please make it just try to make it go for it bachche just try to make it and i think you don't even know that how to draw the fork method for it as well so up to this part if there is any doubt do let me know right so capital a see you know na independent assortment will be there capital a can go with capital b capital c one gamete Capital A can go with capital B, but it can also go for small C. So it's done. Capital A can also go for capital C, but small B, and it can also go for small C and uh, small B. Right? Right? Now, when you talk about the small A, right? When you talk about the small A, so it can go with capital B as well. It can, uh, when it is having capital B, it can also go with capital C. It can also go with the small C as well too. So when it is having small B, it can also go with capital C and small C. So this this is correct, right? This is correct. Now let's write it here. So A B C, A B and C. So it will be A B and C, A B and small C. So capital A. This small b capital b okay this one is done done so here it will be this now what you have to do you have to solve it you have to solve it jaise when you will see this particular see when you will see this particular case only one is recessive isn't it only one is recessive rest all are dominant yes or no only one is recessive and rest all are dominant yes or no tell me yes or no so skin color will vary accordingly yes skin color will vary accordingly isn't it the skin color will vary accordingly see when you will take this skin color will be very fair so here the number of like let's say if this is the scenario capital a capital a capital b small b small c small c so look at the number of dominant allele there are three three are recessive so accordingly skin shades will vary you know that when we look at the human skin color it is it is different right you cannot say that the individual having one skin color is ditto same like the another one no no right so it depends upon the number of dominant more number of dominant allele more darker tone uh, less dominant allele more recessive allele means lighter tone will be there so that's how it varies so it is the tri hybrid cross and i really don't think that i need to right i don't think that i need to uh, you know calculate the ratio you know the product rule isn't it you know the product rule so for di hybrid cross this is the ratio 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1 so it is a tri hybrid cross so multiply it like this and you will get your phenotypic ratio right you will get your phenotypic ratio and you will see that number of different different phenotypes are seven by applying that formula see see total seven one 2 3 4 5 6 7 i ah i made one mistake 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 just a minute 9 to 3 to 1 3 okay so no it should be yes you will see it is going to be yes bachche it is going to be total 
total if you will look at the phenotypic ratio it is going to be 7 only fine it is going to be 7 only that's how you have to calculate fine 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1 into 3 is to 1 it will be 7 you will see that some shades are going to be same there fine okay so ultimately when you will look at the expression the ratio is going to be this but when you look at the expression right negro black very dark brown dark brown maletto light brown such type of shades are going to be there such type of shades are going to be there but if you want to calculate the ratio this is how you can proceed find the exact ratio that's how you can get it 9 is to 3 is to 1 multiply it with 3 is to 1 simple that's your polygenic inheritance where many genes are controlling the expression of one character so this is what you can draw you can practice you can make it ultimately you need to focus on the ratios only right and that is the most important thing the ratios that's all that's all and total you know that 64 zygotes are going to be there so accordingly you can add done bache accordingly you can add done so add it calculate it if there will be any doubt do let me know in the next class so this is what we are going to cover today so let's revise it from ncrt and in next class we'll start it from chromosomal theory of inheritance fine right so in the next class this is what we will discuss so see polygenic inheritance that mendel studies mainly describe those traits that have distinct alternate forms such as flower colors either purple or white but if you look around you will see that there are many traits which are not so distinct in their occurrence right it depends upon that gradient okay so just in humans we don't just have tall or short people as two distinct alternatives but a whole range of possible heights are there right so such traits are controlled by three or more genes and they are this is the polygenic inheritance clear bache right this is the polygenic inheritance so in addition to the involvement of multiple genes here also it takes into the account the influence of environment so you cannot just say that the genes will express it depends upon the environment as well okay it depends upon the environment as well just people who used to live in hilly areas their complexion is comparatively fair right right you know about it so human skin color is another classic example for this so the phenotype reflects the contribution of each allele i told you now so each the effect of each allele is additive this point is important right so just say here they have given the example three genes a b c control the skin color in human so dominant forms are a b and c they will give dark skin color the recessive forms will give light skin color okay okay done so as expected the genotype with three dominant allele and three recessive allele will have intermediate skin color clear this is your polygenic inheritance fine bachche this is your polygenic inheritance and you have to calculate the ratios in the next class fine you have to tell me about the ratios in the next class but it will be same the way i told you fine fine so you can even check the frequency there bachche you can even check the frequency there so any doubt please read it and let me know if there is any doubt if there is any doubt do let me know So phenotypic ratio is going to be same, but the way I said, but ultimately total number of phenotypes, right? That particular person having that particular color, it will be, right? They are going to be seven only. The ratio is same the way I said. Fine. So this is about the pleiotropy. It is also given in your NCRT. So here you can see it is multiple phenotypic expression of a single gene. So they have explained the example of phenyl ketonuria. We have discussed it already, bache. And then this chromosomal theory of inheritance. This is the topic that we are going to cover in the next class. Okay. This is what we are going to cover in the next class fine so i know from last three to four days i didn't share the pdfs in the telegram group so right after your class i will you know directly i will post it in our official telegram group ha huh, dominant epistasis is not given but this is what you need to remember and uh, do not get confused when i was telling you that w and y wala confusion in uh, in kukurbita as i said white for white color w for white color yellow capital y green small y okay and even if you can you can change it you can make 
in your example you can also say that uh, y is epistatic over w accordingly you can vary their color that's all accordingly you can vary their color fine fine so epistasis is the extra topic shiva kumar it is not given in ncrt but question used to come from this part so you can remember the ratio and recessive epistasis is your homework tri hybrid cross ratio and the number of phenotype is your homework they say in the case of human skin color this is how you start you start with the negro black then you will go for the very dark brown right these are the darker shades because here they have more number of dominant alleles right right they have more number of dominant alleles so after very dark brown there will be the dark brown after very after dark brown mulatto light brown will be there but say right then very light brown and finally the fair color will be there so that's how it works clear so pdf will be shared and moreover which is soon we are going to start class 12th syllabus in our avengers 2.0 batch especially in biology right but and you will get the recorded classes whatever we have completed you will get it in recorded form plus we will start the revision sessions for you as well right the topic that we have already covered i will set rec uh, revision classes for it question practice sessions for it doubt sessions for it so that if there is any doubt in the chapters that we have covered you can ask us okay and new chapters soon we are going to start your class 12th syllabus in biology and then there will be the revision of whatever we have covered so still there is time join the classes as soon as possible we have posted many videos right uh, yesterday was sir posted something related to your uh, neat exam date right so obviously it will be there in the month of may so just speed it up fine speed it up start your preparation stop wasting your time and you know that it will hardly take your 10 seconds to mention the comment in the comment section so kindly go for it okay so do let me know you like the session or not so you see the price is increasing right it can increase more so before it's too late join it bache. join it now the price is 5937 right so it will increase after some time so just join it asap so take care bye bye thank you so much everyone